If you've got a Bible today, I'd love you to go to um, the book of Luke, Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. If you weren't in, um, in church, oh, it went very dark for a moment there. Maybe the lights could go up a little bit brighter. That'd be great. Uh, in Luke chapter 14, um, uh, we're going to read a, a great parable. Last weekend, I asked Pastor Peter Prothero uh, to come and speak. Um, and if you missed his messages last week, I want to encourage you to go back and listen to them either on YouTube or Spotify. Um, they, they really were great, great messages, and um, today I'm just going to continue um, kind of flowing on from that. Just before I read to you from Luke 14, um, just to say, for those of you, you might have seen online, it was kind of the guys to put something up, but um, Monica and I shared our, uh, or celebrated our 20-year wedding anniversary this week, so um, that was pretty great. Oh, there we go. 20-year wedding anniversary. 20 years goes really, really fast. Give me a wave if you've been married 20 years or more. Amazing. Look at that, so many of us. Isn't that amazing? Great to be part of a church where people recognize marriage works, and that despite the statistics in the world, um, definitely marriage, doing marriage God's way definitely works. But anyway, we've got a great testimony of 20 years of happy marriage and um, four great healthy kids And we're looking forward to the next 20 years. Amen. All right, we're going to read you from Luke 14. Everyone say Luke 14. And this is an amazing parable. And anytime you read a parable, you always got to remember, in the parable is God and in the parable is you. So this morning as you read this parable, you've got to figure out, well, where's God in this parable and where am I? But I promise you're both in it. And it starts off by saying this, hearing this. A man sitting at the table with Jesus exclaimed, What a blessing it will be to attend a banquet in the kingdom of God. And Jesus replied with this story. How many of you times have you noticed that Jesus will reply to someone's question or someone's statement with a story or a parable to help understand what it is they're trying to get a grasp of? It's so helpful. And he goes on to say this, a man prepared a great feast. Everybody say, a great feast. I want you to picture in your minds for a moment, a great feast. Maybe that's what Christmas Day is going to look like. It's going to look like a great feast. I think a a great feast is like a, there's got to be a magnificent table on which to lay the great feast. And the table isn't bland or ordinary, but the table is decorated and Maybe got candles on there and some foliage or something to make it. I mean, I don't do the table in my house, clearly. But, so, but, but someone who you know, knows how to make it look wonderful and attractive. And, and so there's beautiful decorations. There's a great table. And then for a great feast, there is, of course, an abundance of food. You can't have a great feast without an abundance of food. It's not a feast with lack, is there? A, a feast always has more than enough. How many of you cook too much at Christmas? Just give me a wave if you like, that's me. Cook too much. Yes, and we're eating leftovers for days. And of course, there's great drinks on the table, uh, great wine or great whatever you like to drink. But imagine for a moment a wonderful, magnificent feast has been prepared, okay? So remember, this is a little bit about the kingdom of God. So a man prepared a great feast And he sent out many invitations. Everyone say, many invitations. I want you to notice he didn't send out a few. He wasn't scrimping on his invitations. He didn't send out one or he didn't send out two. He sent out many invitations, okay? It says, um, then they all, uh, he sent out many invitations. So, um, he said to his servant, tell the guests, come, the banquet is ready. But they all began making excuses. One said, I've brought a field and must inspect it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have uh, just brought a pair of oxen and I want to try them out. Uh, Please excuse me. Another said, I just got married. I can't come. And the servant returned and told his master what they had said. His master was furious and said, go quickly into the streets and the alleys of the towns and invite the poor the crippled, the blind, and the lame. And after the servant had done this, he reported, there is still room for more. Somebody say, there's still room for more. I want to look around, looking around this service this morning, and 
There's a great number of people in this room, but I want to say there's still room for more. Amen? There's still room for more. And so his master replied, go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full. So that the house will be full. For none of those I invited will even get the smallest taste of my banquet. I just want to read verse 23 in the Passion Translation. I like how it puts it. So the master told him, all right, go out again. Everybody say, go out again. And this time, bring them all back with you. And watch these words. Persuade the beggars on the streets, the outcasts, even the homeless. Urgently insist that they come in and they enjoy the feast so that my house will be full. The title of my message this morning is very simple. It's a, it's a full house. A full house. Everybody say a full house. How many of you know God wants a full house? God's desire is that his house, his banqueting table, his opportunity for people to come in, he wants it to be full and to overflowing. And if you were to read that whole uh, passage in the Passion Translation, a little later when the house is full, it says the master looked over with glee on his face. Why? Because now his house is full. How many of you like a full house? Give me a wave if you like a full house. Like maybe Christmas time for you, like it's going to be full to overflowing. Uh, it could even be a little chaotic. It could even be a little crazy. Um, I'm one of five kids and uh, we're all married and mom and dad have got 16 grandchildren right now and uh, they still like to gather as much as possible, everyone on one day for a Christmas celebration. And I can tell you, it's a full house. It's a full house. It's a noisy house. It's a slightly chaotic house. It's a little bit crazy at times, but I can see as there's something in the heart of my mom and dad that just love that moment when their house is full to overflowing. And you know, that is the heart of our God, of our Father. His, his heart is that His house would be full. And I, and I pray that you and I never get settled uh, or, 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 get, or get used to uh, uh, having church or having an environment of God's presence that is not full to overflowing. We, we, sh we should never walk in and say, well, it was pretty good today. Um, yeah, okay, we had room, but we're okay with that. No, we should never be okay with creating space that isn't ultimately filled. Because it is the heart of God that all come to his banqueting table and enjoy everything he has to offer. Amen? Um, just met this morning, uh, just before the service started, um, so Suzanne Proetta's friend is here this morning, and Suzanne was just letting me know that a number of years ago, how many years ago was that, Suzanne, did you say? 2010, Suzanne was far from the Lord, and life was in a difficult place, and this uh, amazing lady who I just met this morning uh, had been inviting Suzanne to church for three years. And for three years, she was inviting and inviting and inviting and inviting. And Suzanne kept on saying no and no and no until one point she came to a crisis moment in her life and she picked up the phone and she rang this amazing lady and said, please, can I come? And um, amen. And that is the day that she gave her life to the Lord and talked to Suzanne afterwards. She will tell you that is the day her life got radically started, or at least started to radically turn around from that moment onwards. That's the power of an invite, amen? And I just love this in the Passion Translation. Go out, persuade the beggars. Persuade them. Sometimes I think we think God's gonna do all the work. Like if we just, you know, we create it and we create the space and, you know, maybe we get a little bit confused with Hollywood movies that say, you know, if you build it, they'll come or, uh, you know, create the space and it'll get filled. No, 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 that's Hollywood. That's not real life. Uh, in the kingdom of God, we do create the space. But then in the parable, we are the servants that are to go out into the world and to persuade and urgently insist that you come to the master's banquet. Amen. Because the invitation is an amazing invitation. I think Peter said last week, we all get invitations 
to lots of stuff. We get invitations to weddings. We get invitations to graduations. We get invitations to all sorts of things. But none of them compare to the invitation to an encounter with Jesus. Nothing compares to an encounter with Jesus. I love what it says in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Jesus said, come to me. It's an invitation. All of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I'm humble and gentle of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden that I give you is light. You know, what an invitation in the world in which we live, in a, in a pretty chaotic, crazy, busy, extreme out of order, getting crazier by the day world we live in, the invitation of Jesus is come to my life and I will give you rest for all the burden that is upon your life. Somebody say, hallelujah. <laughs> like that's what an invitation. Your, your life's a bit crazy, come to God. He's got, he wants to take that burden and give you rest. Like, like you've got anxiety, God wants to take it and give you rest. You've got shame, God wants to take it off you and give you his glory. You have lack in your life, God wants to take it off you and give you his abundance. You've got, you got like a bit of a messy background, a bit of a sin in your life, God wants to help you receive that from you and give you his forgiveness. In, it's like th this, this great exchange we preached about for nine weeks this year, like that's the invitation that Jesus is giving people, and it's, it's just the greatest invitation that there is. There's no, you, listen, you can invite somebody to the greatest concert, invite them to go and see Taylor Swift if you want to, I like go, invite them to go and see some great football match, but nothing compares to the invitation to an encounter and a life with Jesus. It's the ultimate invitation, amen? And, and we've got to live a life, I pray, that, that is a life of invitation. Let me just share a couple of few thoughts this morning around this, and then I want to give you um, some very practical thoughts about how you can invite people over the next couple of weeks. First thought is simply this, is number one, is, is the invitation is for everyone. Don't you love that about God? The invitation is for everyone. That There is no one that God has excluded from his kingdom. There's no one that God has said, you can invite them and you can invite them, but don't invite them. No, 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 no. There's, there's, there's no one. The master says, go out and invite these people. And when they returned with these people not able to come, he said, okay, well, let's go again. And this time I want you to invite the poor, the blind, the cripple, and the lame. And we might look at that today and say, well, that's, you know, if I'm, there's not that many blind, poor, crippled, and lame people around, maybe in Weybridge or beyond. But actually, it really does relate to so many people, invite, invite the poor. Well, we live in a season right now where many people are living in lack. M many people don't have enough. That's why we gathered 300-odd gifts to give to Santa Stork, because there are families right now in these communities that are living with less than what they need. And, and the invitation is, hey, go find people right now that have an area of lack in their life, maybe a lack of relationship, maybe a lack of breakthrough, maybe a lack of, of anointing, maybe a lack of healing, but find people of lack and bring them to the house because the promise is God wants to give them abundance for lack. So, so we, we don't need to just invite our friends I pray we do invite our friends, but I pray we go beyond inviting our friends and we go out and we ask, we let the Holy Spirit lead us to people who are living in lack right now. Where's Lee? Lee, give me a wave. I can't see you. Where are you? Where's Lee? Where is he? He was here at the start of the service. He's right there. You know, Lee, what an amazing man uh, bringing people to this church who through one reason or other ha are living in a season of lack, living in a season where there's some stuff in their lives well, the enemy has stolen it. But I love the fact that he's bringing these people to this house and God is meeting them at where they're at and exchanging the lack for God's abundance. If you want to, want to be, want, go and speak to Lee at the end of the service. He'll testify. He'll testify about what God is doing in people's lives. What about the blind? The blind in 2023. Well, blindness is not being able to see the truth 
when the truth is really there. So God says, if there's people in your world, they can't see what you can see, they're, they're the people I want you to bring in. They're the people I want you to go after. You've got a workmate that just, just doesn't get it, doesn't see it. I love Lissa's testimony this morning. Next door neighbors who are like, just let her know in no uncertain terms. We are not coming to your church, but yet the invitation, but come anyway. Come and see what God is wanting you to see. We just got to get people in the room and let God do his work upon their lives. What about this one? To invite the crippled. We don't really use that term, of course, very much in 2023, but a cripple is a noun. It describes a person who cannot walk due to a disability. There are people in our world right now who are walking with a limp or who are walking uh, not, in, not, not with full health because they're carrying something in their lives. And that's our opportunity to say, hey, come. Hey, come, I've got an invitation for you. I, I know somebody who can restore what is broken in your lives. Come. Come on, do we believe this this morning? Do we believe in a God who can restore? <clears throat> And then he says, I want you to bring the lame. The lame is an adjective. To be lame means to be unable to walk properly due to an injury. In other words, something happened to them. They were doing okay, but then something in life happened to them that means they're now not walking with the same freedom that they once were. God says, that's who I want in my house. And I want you to bring those people because I've got something for them. I can restore them. I can heal them, Amen. In 2023, what, is this, what does this really, this invitation look like? I, I think it looks like this. I think it looks like inviting people with messy backgrounds. Invi inviting people, who, you, you, like their history is not good. Their history is a little messed up. God says, I want them in my house. In inviting people who have addictions in their lives, alcohol addiction, drug addiction, pornography addiction, doesn't matter. You're addicted, you're not free. Hey, we know, we know the place that will get you free. It's an encounter with Jesus, amen. It says, go, go find those people. In 2023, I think it's people who are confused. People who are sexually confused. People who have identity confusion. I believe God says, they, they belong in my house. That they're the people I want you. They're not excluded from my house. We want them in this house because our God is able to restore and redeem and bring people to a place of fullness, Amen. And so we, we, we want to we be people that extend the invitation to everybody. Somebody say everybody. everybody. And let me say this, people will not attend a party that they were not first of all invited to. I'll say that again. People will not attend a party that they were not first of all invited to. How many of you know, you, you know, most of us, maybe, I mean, you know, maybe you're like, your confidence is off the scale and you, you, you just rock up to a party that you weren't invited to. But most of us don't go to parties we weren't invited to. Most of us need an invite. It's like, you don't just turn up. Maybe that's the Britishness in us. I don't know. Maybe if you're from another nation, that's not a problem to you. But as Brits, typically we need an invitation before we turn up to somebody's house. Amen. And, uh, and right now, there are people in our world that don't know they're invited. They don't know they're invited because people have maybe told them or they've heard incorrectly or the media has painted a message that you're not welcome in the house of God if you don't look a certain way and act a certain way, orientated a certain way. And um, I just want to say, Equipus Church, come on, everyone's invited to the party. And it's the greatest party on the face of the planet, Amen. It's the greatest party. Number two, simple thoughts this morning. Uh, number one, the invitation is for everyone. Number two, um, I love this, everything is prepared. Everyone say prepared. You've ever, ever kind of been invited to somebody's house and you would quite often, certainly the way maybe I was brought up, probably you might have been brought up too, you, you, would, you would offer, what can I bring? You, you don't want to turn up empty-handed. You want to come with generosity, and so if somebody invites you, you'd often say, well, what can I bring? And uh, most hosts will say, you don't need to bring anything, just bring yourselves. And then uh, you still might bring something anyway, because that's how we're wired. But uh, in, this, in this illustration, I love it, everything's prepared. It says, the master has prepared the feast. 
Like he's, he's prepared it, he's laid the table, he's cooked the meats, he's cooked the vegetables, he's cooked whatever it is you like, he's prepared the greatest wines, he's prepared the greatest, it's ready, it's ready, it's ready. All we've got to do is go out and invite and bring people in, and, and they don't need to bring anything else but themselves. That is great news this morning. When, when you go and you invite this week and you take these, these little business cards or whatever it is and, and you're invited, they may say, well, what do I got to do to come? Nothing. You just got to come. Do I need to clean my life up? No, you just need to come. Do I need to get free from what I'm messed around in right now? No, you just need to come. Do I, do I need to like wear my Sunday best? No, you just need to come. Do, do, I need, do I need to like prepare and, you know, get ready? No, you just need to come because God is prepared everything for people to receive. Come on, this is good news this morning. We don't need to get ready. We, we, just, gotta, we just gotta get people into the house and God will do the rest. You know, I was thinking of this phrase that, um, you know, for a number of years, I suppose a lot of churches used it and, and, and I like it in part, but I think it's only half true. And it's the phrase, come as you are. Come as you are. It's a good phrase, isn't it? We say to people, come as you are. Come as you are. You, you, man, the invitation is come as you are. You don't, need, you don't need to clean yourself up. You don't need to get your life right. You just need to come as you are. But, but here's the wonderful thing about the banqueting table. It's come as you are, but then you don't need to stay as you are. Like come as you are, but come with the expectation that I'm going to leave differently from how I came. I love that. I love that about God. People say, can I come as I am to God? Absolutely, you can come as you are to God. But, but then on the other hand, understand that God wants to clean you up. God, God wants to put you through the hospital and get you mended and get you out the other side so you're healthy. And, uh, and so it's like, come as you are. You know, come hungry, but here's the wonderful thing, leave full. Come to God's house hungry, but leave full. Come to God's house lonely, but leave with relationship and friendship. Come to God's house with lack, but leave with abundance. Come with confusion, but leave with understanding. Come blind, but leave seeing what you've never seen before. Come crippled, but leave walking. And I, I believe with all my heart, if you're visiting us today for the first time and you're here as a result of an invitation, uh, you, we're so glad you're here. We're so glad you said yes to the invitation. But th this, this, this kind of thing called church is, is a number of things. And, and one of the things is a hospital. One of the things is we come in broken and we come in wounded and we come in broken down, but through the grace and the goodness of God, He is able to restore us, put us back together, redeemed in His image, and sent back out with the other servants to go and grab a whole bunch of other people in. And I, I really believe that sometimes we've got to be so careful that our whole focus doesn't become just get to church, but this is called Equippers Church, because the idea is you are equipped to go back out into the world and bring the broken and hurting and disappointed people back into God's house so they can be restored just as you've been restored, amen? Not about coming and sitting and saying, I got a good word today, praise God. I was in the presence, I mean, that's important and praise God for that, but we gotta do more than that, amen? We gotta make a decision to say, no, the invitation is for everyone, everything is prepared, I just got to go out and bring a whole bunch of people back in. If you believe that, say amen. amen. And here's the third thing. Here's the third, third thought, very, very simply, is not everyone will say yes. Not everyone will say yes. They, they, they went out and, and they invited, you know, I don't know who they invited, by, but I, kind of, I imagine them inviting, like, their friends. And I, I imagine them inviting, like, the people they really loved, like I imagine that's who they invited. The people they thought were gonna say yes. Anyone ever invited someone to church? She's like, you were sure they were gonna say yes. And then you were shocked when they said no. 
I kind, of, I kind of imagine them going out and that's who they invited. Like, man, I'm going to, I know, this is a nice person. This person's got good morals. This person would be good in our church. This person would fit easily in our church. And I, I kind of imagine them going out and, and they go after these people and they all make excuses to say, no, not today. No, not today. You know, no, I bought a new car. I got to go, you know, take it for a test drive. No, I bought a new house. I'm just furnishing it right now. I like the example, no, I just got married. That means I can't get involved in anything that's happening. And, and he's like, no, no, no. That, he says, okay, if that's the case, I want you to go again, and I want you to keep inviting. Keep inviting. So, so here's the thought. Not everyone will say yes, but according to this parable, if we keep on going and we keep on inviting, at some point the house will become full. I want to say that again. If we keep on going... If we go again, okay, we invite some people and they say no, and we're a little disappointed. But if we say, I'm not giving up at this moment, they said no, but I'm, I'm going to go again. I'm going to go again. I'm going to go find somebody new. I'm going to reach someone I've never reached before. If we will keep on going, if we'll, remember, he sends them out three times. The first time they go, no one comes. The second time they go, the house is partially full. But I love the fact that the desire of God is his house would be full. And so he sends them a third time. I wonder how many of us give up at the first out time. I wonder how many of us are like, man, I tried. So therefore, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I've ticked my box for today. And I've done, you know, I've tried, I've gone, it didn't work, therefore I don't need to do it anymore. No, but according to this parable, we're to go again and fill the house. And if the house is still not filled, we're to go again, amen. I want to encourage us this week at Crippers Church, uh, we have the most amazing opportunity to fill the house of God multiple times over next weekend. And I, I want to encourage you to go. I want to encourage you to go again. I want to encourage you to go, go, and go again, and this week, come on, let's, let's believe that we're going to see this house not partially full, but we're going to see this house full to abundance, and just in case you're like, well, isn't that just to make you feel good and the team feel good? No, it's not, because it is the master's desire that the house would be full, and serving the master is our greatest joy, making God pleased is our greatest joy. And if God wants his house filled, then I want his house filled too. And we've got to take on and embrace the challenge of being a group of people that love to invite. Come on, if you believe that this morning, say a big amen. 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 So listen, just in closing, Joe, you could come. Let me, let me give you a couple of thoughts very simply. And I've called these um, cues of to invite, like cues to invite. You know, if you're driving behind a car and somebody indicates, that's a cue to you that they're about to change direction. Or if you're driving behind a car and somebody brakes, that's a cue, that's an indicator. You better change your speed because they're slowing down. And I got three cues this morning that are great indicators or are, are, are great um, kind of, I wanna lodge them in your brain so that when you hear these words, you think that's my opportunity. And they're, they're the three knots, the three knots. The number one is this. Whenever you hear a person say, things are not going well, things are not going well, that's a great opportunity to say, hey, this is an invitational moment. People say, things are not going well. Maybe financially, they start to open up their lives to you. Man, financially, we are really struggling right now. Things are not going well financially. Maybe things relationally are not going well. Marriage is in difficulty, estranged kids, work situations, whatever it might be. Whenever somebody opens up their heart and they say to you, things are not going well. Maybe career is not going well. Maybe business is not going well. Maybe life right now is just not going well. When you hear that phrase, I want to encourage you, that's a cue to say, hey, why don't you come with me to church? Because in church, we have the answer to all of those problems. In God, we have the answer 
to financial challenge. To God, we have the answer to relational problems. In God, we have the answer to all the things we're struggling with right now. So when you hear that thought, number one, things are not going well. Everyone say things are not going well. Come on, say it nice and loud. I know you're not proclaiming this over your life, by the way. Don't worry. And just lodging it in your brain. Everyone say things are not going well. You go, ah, oh, I'm gonna, great opportunity. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Remember, what are we inviting them to? We're inviting them to more than church. We're inviting them to the great feast. The great feast is abundant. The great feast is more than enough. The great feast has everything anyone would ever need in this life, amen. Things are not going well. Here's the second cue to invite people. Whenever somebody says, I was not prepared for. I was not prepared for. I, I was not prepared for that diagnosis. I was not prepared that I lost my job. I, I was not prepared that my child made that decision. I was not prepared for COVID over these last couple of years. I was, I was not prepared for the interest rate rises that are putting great pressure on my life right now. I was not prepared. Anytime you hear that phrase, I was not prepared. What a great opportunity to say, well, why don't you come with me to God's house? Because He knows everything. He sees everything. He, he knows what's ahead. He, 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 he knows what's around the corner and He can answer your problems. So everyone say, I was not prepared. Come on, Equippers Church. I need to hear you this morning. Everyone say, I was not prepared. In other words, maybe they're in a crisis moment. I heard this by Rick Warren uh, a couple of months ago. I thought it was good. Rick Warren said this. If you don't know who Rick Warren is, he's... They call him the pastor of America. And uh, Rick Warren said this. He said, everyone's lives um, are a little bit like a clamshell. You know, a clamshell, it's like shut tight. And he said, most people's hearts are, are, are shut tight. But then something will happen that for a moment of time, it'll, it'll open that clamshell up. It'll open their heart up. And he said, it's usually a crisis or a transition, or a loss, or, or, or to my point, something they weren't prepared for, or something in their life wasn't going. And often in that moment, people's hearts open up for a moment, and that's our window of opportunity as believers to take the truth of the gospel, and in that moment, just deposit it into a person's heart. And then that clamshell may well close down again, for a period of time, but we use the opportunity that God gave us to deposit the seed. Sometimes we're, we're trying to put seed into a person's heart that is not open to receiving it. And we can bombard people and we can come over the top of people. And sometimes it's really not helpful, but as spirit-filled believers, what we've got to get, get good at doing is asking the Holy Spirit to give us insight as to when a person's heart is opening. And in that moment, we take the truth of the gospel and we deposit it. And who knows, somebody may have deposited a truth before and it's gonna continue to remain open. Maybe it will close only to open at a later date for another believer to sow another seed. But our, our job is actually just to, hey, what's happening in a person's life right now? I wanna deposit a seed in this moment, amen. So I was not prepared for is a great opportunity to go, okay, there's probably an open heart right now probably an open heart. And here's, here's the third one, a great cue of when we invite people is when you hear somebody say, I am not from here. I am not from here. Everybody say, I am not from here. When somebody says, I am not from here, it probably means I'm new. I'm looking for relationship. I want to connect with some people that I don't know right now. They, they may be letting you know they have no family no friends around. They, they may suddenly be letting you know that there's a loneliness on the inside of their heart when they say, I'm not from here. And I reckon that's an amazing opportunity to say, when you hear that, to say, ah, oh, why don't you come with me? Because I've got a whole bunch of friends that would love to get to know you. I've got a connect group that would love to have you in their home and share some food with you and celebrate with you and go through life with you. And I reckon that is incredibly attractive in the world in which we live, amen. So three simple cues, I pray you remember them. Things are not going well, invitational moment. 
I was not prepared for invitational moment. I am not from here invitational moment, amen? And uh, if we put to do that, I believe great things are gonna happen. Let me just close by reading Luke chapter 14, verse 23 in the Passion Translation one more time. I wonder if guys, you could put it on screen. Luke 14, 23. So the, fa- so the master told them, this is God uh, speaking to us this morning. He says, all right, go out again. And this time, bring them all back with you. Persuade the beggars on the streets, the outcasts, even the homeless, and urgently insist. Everybody say, urgently insist that they come in. Why? To enjoy the feast and so that my house would be full. Amen. I believe that our Heavenly Father would commission us this morning at the start of this week of going into our major Christmas celebrations. I I believe He would commission us to say, I want you to go out again. If you've been out this week and we've heard testimony already of people who've gone and they've invited and praise God for that. And if you've gone already and you've invited, that's wonderful. But I believe God would just inspire you to say, go again. We're not full yet. Go again, we're not full yet. If you haven't been yet, if you're here this morning and you're like, man, I've not invited anybody. I'm not here to condemn you or to convict you, but I am here to inspire you out of the Father's heart. The Father is coming to you today and saying, would you go and bring people in that my house would be full? Amen. Come on, how many of you believe that if we did that, if we went, we can see a full house for God over and over and over and over again. And I just, let me just tell you this, here's my conviction. If we get people in the house, something will happen. If we get people into the, into the presence of God, something will happen. The power of prayer is powerful. Don't rely on me, don't rely on anyone else. You make sure that you come next weekend prayed up, fasted up if you needed to but ready to know that if people step into this room by the power of God, something is gonna shift and it's gonna change in their lives. Hearts are gonna open, seed is gonna go in, and at the right time, we're gonna see a great harvest, one to the Lord. Come on, if you believe that this morning, give God a big praise. Woo! Come on, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet if you would with me. Come on, I wanna pray for you this morning that you'd be filled with boldness, that as you go and you invite, man, you're gonna be courageous. Who's feeling courageous right now? Good on you. Who feels like they could do with a little more courage in this area? Come on now, be honest. Who feels like they could do with a lot more courage in this area? Come on, lift your hands right now. Heavenly Father, I pray this morning over this wonderful group of people, this, this your servants, that have had the privilege of gathering around the great feast. God, we've tasted, we've enjoyed, we've we've received everything that we've needed from you. We've enjoyed your presence. God, we've enjoyed your food. We've We've enjoyed your provision. We've enjoyed your healing. We've enjoyed our old life being washed clean and a new life being given to us. But now today, God, we say we, we want to go. We want to be like your servants that go and compel and encourage and pursue and insist that people who need you would come to God's house. And I just pray right now, Father, where there are hungry hearts, where there are people who are saying, that's me. And if, you, if that's you, man, you need to articulate it to God right now. If you say, that's me, I want to be the one. I want to be the one. You know, Jude Coleman, I believe that God's going to cause you to be an unbelievable gatherer in the kingdom of God. I believe there's a grace on your life. It's even there right now, but it's going to grow. It's going to increase over the days and the years to come. But you, young man, 
are going to be someone that when you put the invitation out, you're going to be amazed at how many people are going to gather to the sound of your voice. You're going to say, I don't know what I did. I just said, come, and they came. I believe there's a grace on your life. And I want to just say, even this week, even this week, as you go, young man, as you are, figuring out who you are in God, that as you go, it's going to be like the net is going to be pulled off. Oh, that's exciting. It's like the net is going to be pulled in around you. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Come on, how many of you, the rest of you this, this morning would say, man, I want that over my life too. Come on, I want that. That's, listen, if that's something just sparked in your heart right now, come on, just grab a hold of it and say, me too, me too, me too, God, use me. Use me. Danny, I believe over your life, God's brought you for a purpose and a time. And I know that, you know, not everything's sorted out in your life, but God is getting ready to send you out. And they're going to say yes. They're going to say, you're going to be amazed at the people that are going to say yes when you head out into the world. Come on, just for a few more moments, if that's you. I believe Holy Spirit is just imparting something right now into people's lives in the last couple of moments. If that's you and you say, I am hungry, I want to be used by God. I don't want to enjoy this feast all for myself, but I want to be one that throws the net out, throws the invitation out, goes where I've never been before. That's me. That's me. You know, I believe Neil Warren, it's a new season. I want to declare it's a new season. You are one who has gone. You have gone. I know you've gone. I know you've gone out and you've invited and sometimes you've seen fruit and sometimes you haven't seen fruit. Maybe you've been disappointed by that. I don't know. But I believe that God wants you to go again. I believe He wants you to go again. And this time is going to be a going of obedience. So this time... If I can say it, you're not even, you're not going to feel like it. You're not going to want to do it. It's going to be something in your heart that says, God, I, this, is a, this, is, this is straight out obedience, God. But I want to prophesy that this time you're going to see greater fruit than you've ever seen before. This time, you're going to be amazed at what God has been doing. He has seen and remembered every act of obedience, every act of service. Every time you've stepped out when it cost you something, He's seen it. He hasn't forgotten it. But I believe in this new season, there's an invitational pull upon your life. And if you would step into it, it's going to take a step of obedience. It's going to be, okay, God, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. That's up to you. You've got to decide. But I believe there's a, an opportunity right now to go, God, I am going to go. I don't feel like it, but I am going to go again. And I'm going to pursue those people in my world that don't need you because they need him. Amen. And I just bless you with that this morning in Jesus' name. Just put me a, give me a, a wave this morning if you say, I've got people in my world that I've pursued, but it's like, man, it feels like it's never happened. Just give me a wave. People are like, man, I've been going after them and going after them and going after them. It's like, well, nothing's happened. Could I just boldly declare over you this morning, it's a new season and it's a new day and God is gonna start to pull the net in around some of those people that we've been pursuing for a long time. I wanna say it's harvest season in Jesus' name. We've sown in tears, but I believe we're in a season where we're gonna reap with great joy and we're gonna reap with great celebration. Come on, if you believe that this morning, God wants to bring in a mighty, mighty harvest into His house in Jesus' name, amen. So just for 30 seconds, lift your hands, close your eyes. Let the Holy Spirit show you right now, people in your world He wants you to go to. Holy Spirit, I ask you right now, drop names. Drop faces. Drop images. Holy Spirit, show people right now. Show people where hearts are open. Show people where the harvest is ripe.
Now, God, fill us with boldness. Fill us with courage. As we go out into the towns and the villages and the highways and the byways to invite people to the great feast. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I want to encourage you, please be praying this week. Please be inviting. Please be praying. Let's gather together next weekend for just the most incredible celebration, not just of Christmas, but of the great feast. Amen. Come on, give God a big praise if you would as we go. God bless you. You are dismissed. Have a great rest of your day, and we will see you next weekend.